And I'm going to be talking with you that sounds like something that's been ripped out of the pages of science fiction. Time travel. It's one of mankind's oldest fantasies. But would it be possible to build a real time machine and go into the future or the past? Who of us has not wondered what's going to happen next? What is the future going to be like? Or thought about the past and said, what if I could have changed something in my life? What if I could visit someone in the past? These things are things that are fundamental to us. I'm here to tell you that there is a real scientific basis for the possibility of time travel. And the basis of it is associated with the individual that's behind me. And I'm sure that all of you may recognize who this is. It was, uh, in fact, mentioned by our, uh, the person who introduced me. Suppose that we have an astronaut who has a family here on the Earth. And suppose that they, that, uh, suppose that she is volunteers for a rocket, you know, for one of the new projects when it comes out. Well, what could happen, and this really could happen because we have seen the effects of it already on a smaller scale, if she's traveling in a rocket that's going fast enough, she may find that if she's making a trip out to some point in space and back, and let's say for her, it only took about five years to make that trip. If she's traveling fast enough, time could slow down for her. She would notice it, by the way. It would, other people looking at her would notice her heart rate metabolism slowing down. When she returns, she may only be five years older, but decades could have passed here on the Earth. It turned out that Einstein was dissatisfied with how gravity behaved. He felt that there needed to be a whole new theory of gravity. And what he did was to develop a new theory of gravity that was called the general theory of relativity. In that theory, Einstein found that not only is time affected by motion, but time is affected by gravity as well. What do I mean by that? According to Einstein, the stronger gravity is, the more time will slow down. That means that a clock here at the surface of the Earth where gravity is stronger should be running slower than a clock at higher altitudes. Now you might say, wait a minute, has this been shown, this effect of gravity on time? Not only has it been shown, it's actually something that's part of our everyday life. What do I mean by that? I'm sure that you recognize this. This is an older version, but this is a GPS system. Okay? And the GPS system actually shows us the effect of gravity on time. Next slide, please. Let me explain how the GPS system works. Right now, 12,000 miles above us, there are 24 satellites in geosynchronous orbits. That is to say, three of these satellites are covering one portion of the world at any particular time. The way the system works is that your GPS unit in your car has a clock in it. These satellites have clocks too. At a certain time, the satellite sends a signal that reaches your unit at the surface of the Earth at a certain time, okay? So the satellite sends it at a certain time, your unit receives it at a certain time. Now, as you know from basic physics, if I know time and I know the speed, and the speed in this case of the signal is the speed of light. If I know time and I know speed, there's a very simple formula that allows me to compute distance, okay? It's a very basic formula. So by knowing the time that the satellite sent the signal, the time your unit received it, and knowing the speed of this, I can compute the distance where you are on the Earth. When they set up the system, however, it was not working. It was giving completely wrong locations. And at first, the engineers were puzzled. What's going on? What's happening here? What they forgot was Einstein's theory of gravity, his general theory of relativity because the clock in your unit, because it's closer to the surface of the Earth, that clock is running slower than the clocks on board those satellites. 
Those clocks are running much faster, in fact, noticeably faster. So what's happening is, is that there's an error that's happening because these clocks are running faster than the clock in your unit, and they're out of sync. What they had to do was to use computers to calibrate the system to take into account that error. Suppose you think of time as being a straight line with the past here, the present in the middle, and the future at the top of the line. If I can twist time into a loop, then what can I do? I can go from the past to the present to the future. But I've made time into a loop, so I can do what? I can go from the future to where? The past. So by using gravity, I open up the possibility of a portal to the past. This is real physics. One of the things I think that it's important for us to realize is that one day, one day, we will have control of our destiny in a way that we cannot even begin to imagine. And for you young people in the audience, you will be engaged in an adventure that will be absolutely incredible when that happens. And some of you may decide to go into physics in order to help that revolution along its way. But no matter what area that you go into, I hope that you pursue it with a passion. One of the things that I try to point out also is the fact that whatever it is, and when I'm talking to young people, I like to emphasize that. Choose a goal, a path for yourself that you find exciting. It doesn't matter whether it's science, whether it's music, whether it's law, whether it's athletics, but choose something that you find as a passion, not something that's found by your guidance counselor or your parents. They can help you but it should be something that turns you on, okay? Then you should develop a strategy for trying to achieve that goal, whatever it is. And then you have to put in the work, okay? You have to pay your dues in order to achieve it. But if you do that, you will be happy with whatever route you choose.